imagine a landscape so vast and unlivable, the only thing you would see for miles is dense forest in an area covered with water and mud. Welcome to the Great Black Swamp. The Great Black Swamp was the hardest place to settle in Ohio. The Black Swamp was named by soldiers during the War of 1812 who crossed it. They named it the Home of Satan. The Great Black Swamp was 25 miles wide from north to south, 100 miles long from west to east, compassing 1,500 square miles. This area is known as Northwest Ohio. The Black Swamp tracked across Northwest Ohio from Lake Erie along the south side of the Miami River to Fort Wayne, Indiana. In total, the Black Swamp covered 12 counties. Water covered most of the land throughout most of the year. There was so much water, it could sink a horse up to its chest. Pioneers traveling west in the late 1700s and the early 1800s, they would avoid the Black Swamp because of the terrain was so difficult to cross. Around the 1830s, some settlers began to settle along ridges and riverbanks. They moved here because land east of the Mississippi was so hard to find. Some parts of northwest Ohio were not totally underwater, although Bowling Green was 100% covered with water. The people trying to get here broke barriers to get through the swamp. As settlers arrived, they looked at the land as the enemy. Not only did they have to worry about the swamp land, they had to contend with wolves, bears, mosquitoes, and the vast forest. The animals that first called the Black Swamp their home were beaver, mink, muskrat, fox, a smaller version of bison, white-tailed deer, raccoon, rabbit, squirrel, bass, bluegill, and carp, fish that were found in the muddy waters. The trees that covered much of the swamp were ash, elm, cottonwood, and sycamore. Some of those trees can still be found today in your backyard. In the higher ground, the trees were birch, basswood, oak, and hickory. These were common as well. The settlers that decided to stay cleared most of the trees, killed wild animals that posed a danger, and drainage projects were started. In 1860, ditch laws were passed. A large portion of the swamp had been drained. James B. Hill invented the Buckeye Traction Ditcher that helped drain the swamp. Ditches that lined many county roads were big enough to swallow entire cars. I'm at the Wood County Historical Museum talking to the director. Um, why did people settle in the Black Swamp? Well, I think that people came here because they were looking for a new opportunity. Um, many of the people that settled here came from the East Coast. Many of them were of German descent, as we see in a lot of the heritage in Wood County. And I think they were just looking to find um, a better opportunity. They may have settled here thinking that it was going to be really great. Maybe somebody might have sold them land. And then they got here and realized they were in the middle of a big black swamp. What were some of the ditch diggers and artifacts that were in use for that you have here? Um, here at the Historical Society, we do have some artifacts in our collection that would have been from uh, the Black Swamp time. Um, the Buckeye Ditch Digger is one of them that you can see um, out on the grounds of the property. Um, when the people came here and they realized they didn't have anywhere else to go because the resources were, um, no pun intended, being drained, uh, they were needing to figure out how to make it work. So machinery like these ditch diggers were used 
to dig these big deep ditches throughout Wood County, as you can see today, just driving around. And that was um, made, the, made it available to drain that swamp water, dry up the land, and then they found that there was really rich farmland here mm -hmm. once they were able to clear the land. They broke barriers to make a way to start draining the swamp. Clay tiles were instrumental in draining the swamp. By 1870, over a dozen tile factories were built, along with draining the swamp. These tile factories helped create jobs. As the work continued to clear forests and dig ditches to drain the swamp, sickness was an over-present danger living and surviving in the swamp. Many of the settlers would develop a high fever known as swamp fever, which had high fevers, deep chills, and violent shaking. Today, this swamp fever is known as malaria, a deadly disease transmitted by mosquitoes. Victims developed a flu-like symptom caused by a parasite that infects the red blood cells. One of the major routes for travel and trade was the 31-mile stretch between Fremont and Perrysburg called the Maumee Western Reserve Road. This road is known as US-20, a road many travel daily with cars. The stretch was so popular by the 1830s that 31 taverns were established, one tavern every mile. By the end of the 19th century, most of the black swamp had been drained. Its rich black swamp soil has been turned into productive farmland still being used today. A clear barrier was broken. Why did people settle in the Great Black Swamp? A few reasons. Uh, not any of them super well documented. Uh, you know, during the eight, early 1800s, uh, we had the War of 1812, which did bring soldiers to Northwest Ohio to fight the British, uh, both on land and in Lake Erie. Um, some of those soldiers, especially from Kentucky and Southern Ohio, uh, when they were experiencing the Great Black Swamp, did realize that there was some potential uh, that if you could get rid of the water, it would be very productive farmland. Because in, in fact, what the swamp was, uh, you know, was a 12,000 year old forest. And it had laid down a lot of organic material, uh, basically think of a compost heap that's been allowed to grow for 12,000 years. Mm -hmm. So if you can get rid of the water and grow crops on it, those crops are going to grow very easily and very heartily. Native Americans were continually pushed further and further into the swamp and out of other places in Ohio that were more earlyly settled. Um, so they got stuck with the worst land in the state. But eventually even that was taken away from them and they were moved to Kansas. Um, so following 18, about 1833, in the removal of the last of the Native Americans, um, you see the swamp being developed very quickly. That land that was a reservation was held by the uh, U.S. government, and that was sold both directly to people, but it was also sold to land speculators. And a land speculator is someone who buys land really cheap and then sells it for more later on to people. Um, so these land speculators would operate out of Cleveland, out of uh, New York City, uh, New England, and they would catch the people coming off of the boats from Europe and sell them cheap land, explaining that it was a wilderness open to them and a very nice place to be, basically lying to them. <laughs> so these people would sink part of their savings into this land, make their journey across the Appalachian Mountains, um, all the while, the closer they would get, the worse the stories would get of what they're getting into. The short-term impact is the trees. The long-term impact is having great farmland to grow crops.